So I've been working on a bunch of small projects off camera and I wanted to make a quick video to show you guys what I've been making. Here I've got a vintage crochet vanity set, an 18th century embroidered pocket, some knitted frogs, a pencil drawing of actress Carol Lombard, and a Gravity Falls watercolor, and I'll also be showing you a vintage crochet rooster applique. So yeah, I hope you enjoy! So the first project I did was a watercolor from the show Gravity Falls. Um, I just drew this digitally and now I'm tracing the printout onto a sheet of tracing paper, which I'll then transfer onto the watercolor paper. I also um, traced it on the back as well so that the image wouldn't be mirrored when I went to press it onto the paper. I'm not really that great at watercolor and so um, I kind of just tried my best. I just find it difficult like getting the right pigment to water ratio and also mixing the correct color on top of that. And so here I just laid down the watercolor and kind of dabbed up the excess water. Um, that's probably not how you're supposed to do it, but it, it worked for me. And with a dryer brush, I just added some texture to the cliff here. Here you can see I've been working on uh, just blending in the background and laying down the colors that I need and um, it was kind of looking really bad at this point and so I tried my best to add some trees to the cliff and I also colored in the big trees in the foreground to kind of uh, get a better sense of what the picture was going to look like. It wasn't looking great at this point so I decided to go in with a micron pen and just add some outlines um, and hopefully define everything a bit more and I ended up really liking how it came out like that. I think it like makes it look definitely more like the show, definitely more cartoony. And now I'm just adding the bridge across um, the two cliffs. I actually really liked this part because it wasn't so difficult and I just kind of drew the lines and it ended up looking pretty convincing, so that was cool. So next I worked on the water tower. I ended up getting rid of the scaffolding on the original and instead just doing this simple brown tower because it was just easier to do in watercolor. Um, but I think it ended up matching the picture very well, so... And of course, I'm adding the explosion to the top. So for the river, I decided to do that in colored pencil. Here I've just got some Prismacolors, so that um, I could just get it like a bit more crisp than with watercolor. And I drew in the road and I'm adding houses that I'll then color with um, colored pencil again. I always tape down the edges of my watercolors so that um, I get this nice crisp edge when I remove the tape. And to the top I'm just adding Gravity Falls in cursive, like in the um, screenshot from the show. Honestly, it came out so much better than I thought it was going to be. Like you saw it like halfway through, it was not looking good. And um, I'm really proud of how it came together with the use of the micron pen and like the colored pencils and stuff. I really like um, what the product looks like every time I do watercolor, but it's just so stressful trying to not mess up while doing it that uh, I don't really find it that fun, but I do really like how this came out. Another one of my recent projects were these two knitted frogs. I think they turned out super cute. I just knitted them from like a Ravelry pattern that I found. Um, I'll link it below if you want to buy it. The same seller also has a pattern for a sweater for these guys, but I didn't want to buy it and so I just kind of like uh, tried to make it myself. So her pattern definitely looks better than this. <laughs> but um, I made this sweatshirt for this guy and I think it looks really cute as well as a crocheted bucket hat. I'm planning on making more outfits for them and maybe a clothing rack made out of twigs to hang them all on. Uh, so yeah. The pattern is pretty easy, it is also super fast to put together, like you can make one of these guys in like an afternoon if you really wanted to. Um, here's the yarn I used. I just got this on Etsy, um, it's Holst Super Soft and in the color Heath, and it's 100% wool which is really nice. I've made a shirt out of this too, and it does shrink after it's been washed, like quite a bit. And for their bellies, I used this yarn from the same seller, it's um, Holst. Coast in the shade Tawny Owl, and it's half lamb's wool and half cotton, and so it does feel a bit more like cotton, but um, it's not like horrible to knit. 
So another project I've been working on is this 18th century embroidered pocket. Um, this actually came out of a kit, so I figured it'd be a pretty good introduction to embroidery for me because I haven't really done it seriously, but I figured it would be like a good skill to have for just sewing projects in the future. So here you can see um, all of the embroidery that I've done. The kit came with this piece of cotton twill um, to embroider the pocket onto, as well as as well as the design printed onto it. Um, but this piece of cotton twill that I'm going to be using as the backing for the pocket um, came out of my stash, as well as these two pieces of cotton voile, which I'm going to be using as a lining. So my next step is I'm going to baste um, all of these layers together so that I can bind them with this uh, twill tape that also came out of my stash. And then I'll add these ties, which is just like a, a thicker um, cotton twill tape, which I'll bind the top of the pocket with so that it can tie around the waist. So I finished my pocket. Um, this is what it looks like. I didn't plan on committing to hand sewing the whole thing, but I just like started by basting it and I was like, you know, it'd be neater if I bound the edges while hand sewing and then I ended up doing the entire thing by hand. So um, that was a fun change of plans. So yeah, I just bound the edges with this twill tape and I also cut down the center front opening and bound that as well. Um, here on the inside, you can see my lining fabric. It's like this um, off-white sort of pinkish fabric. And I backstitched this thicker twill tape along the top to act as the ties of the pocket. So something I don't think I've shown on this channel before is my art. I'm not the most creative person, so when I draw, I draw like directly from reference. And so this is a picture of Carol Lombard drawn in just like number two pencil um, from a publicity photo for her. She was an actress from the 1930s. I think like the most popular movie she was in was My Man Godfrey, which is a great movie. I'm really proud of how this came out. Usually my art does not look this good. Um, the only things are here and here. I ripped the paper. And so that's why it's a little bit darker there, unfortunately. So here I'm crocheting a rooster that I'm going to stitch onto an oven mitt for a gift. Uh, this pattern came from the work basket, which is a needlework magazine from like 1930 to, I guess, like the 90s. This pattern specifically came out of the late 40s and I have it scanned and um, uploaded online and I'll leave the link in the description in case you want to make it. The pattern is pretty quick, like I can make it in like two or three hours if I really tried. And I've made it a bunch of times and every time it comes out very nicely. And it's great for gifts and like kitchen themed uh, stuff like that. So I'm done crocheting it, now I'm going to block it because um, it kind of looks like a mess right now. So I just have a needle felting pad here, you can block it to anything like a carpet or anything like that. And I'm just using the pins to straighten out everything um, while it's wet so that it'll dry in that position and it'll be nice and neat. And I'm using cotton crochet thread, which is uh, most of the reason why I'm able to block it, because only natural fibers can be blocked and like it doesn't really work very well with polyester. And here I'm just stitching it onto the oven mitt. And there's what it looks like. So this is a part of a vintage vanity set pattern. I've made two pieces of it so far. This is the smaller piece and I have a larger piece sitting on my dresser. This pattern came out of a magazine from my own collection. Um, it was from the work basket, an issue from like the late 40s, I think. And the work basket was like a needlework magazine. So it has um, mainly knitting, crochet and tatting from the 30s through like, I think they went into like the 90s, but I have a whole bunch of issues from the late 40s through like 1955. I have made a video on them before, but this is my favorite vanity set pattern out of um, all of my issues. Um, as you can see, it's got like these two different motifs that you um, crochet together. I love this pattern because it's not like the same thing over and over again. It's got a little bit of variety to it. The only thing is these motifs right here have like a join in them. And so there are so many ends to weave in. This is the smaller piece. I've got a much larger piece that I'll show you in a second. One of these smaller ones uh, doesn't take very long to make, just like a couple of days, but the larger one did take me quite a long time to get finished. And I'll have the pattern linked in the description in case you want to check it out. So here's the larger piece. Um, sorry, the lighting's so bad. 
um, but if I just move this vanity tray, it's actually vintage from the 50s. Here you can see the entire piece. It's uh, seven by five, so quite a lot of motifs in this one. And I just really love the pattern and I'm super proud of it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know this stuff isn't the most popular, but I really appreciate you sticking around till the end. If you're not subscribed, um, you can do that if you please. And I'll see you next time.